the blindfold on my eyes smelled like nothing but blood. My hands were tied behind my back with heavy chains of metal. I was informed I was taken to execution. An officer was standing behind me. I couldn't see him, but I could imagine. He was talking to me and he said, load. When he said that phrase, everything changed. I heard <laughs> all these guns behind me being loaded. I'm so close to death. Then he said, aim. A slight move in the guns and it's one time froze. My brain started to generate all these beautiful memories of the ones I love and the ones who love me. I really wished I had more time to imagine more people with their smiles. But there it came. Poof! And I, I died. For the first time in my life, I died. I never died before. I don't know how it will feel to die. I don't know how after life would look like. Have you? Have you died before? Can you tell me how it feels to die? Have you? I didn't know. So for me, I thought, there it ended, and I died. So let me take you back in time and tell you a heartbreaking, beautiful story. There was a person I loved the most in my life. He was my cousin, Bashir. We used to go and knock on the neighbor's doors and run away for fun. We had the first hamburger together, we built a greenhouse together, but also we once tamed a bird to fly back and stand on our shoulders. And when the protests started in Syria asking for freedom and democracy against the corrupted Syrian regime, Bashir called me and said, hey, let's join them. We went to the street holding these flowers in our hands and saying, freedom, 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 jumping for it with so much joy. But being peaceful with a flower did not prevent the intelligence services in Syria from protesting us, from, from imprisoning us. We were detained and we were put in pain in political prisons. Torture and starvation was our reality. But Bashir and I kept ourselves very strong by taking care of each other. However, the guard noticed our bond, how we cared. So the guard would come and force Bashir to torture me and force me to torture Bashir. Torture led to illness. Illness leads to weakness. And when you are weak, it's difficult to survive. We would be sitting in very small squares in tiny rooms like this, day and night. Crowded rooms, and Bashir would be in his square doing nothing but looking everyone in the eye and smiling. He always surprised me. We will be coming just back from the torture with the blood on our shoulders from our head, and he would be sitting and smiling to everyone in this room. And whoever smiles back to him, Bashir would say a very optimistic phrase of his to them, saying, Mi tuarde, which means hundred flowers. I would carry him every day to the bathroom, a way of 30 meters, crowded with guards, hungry guards that will beat you. And at that dark day, I remember he fell from my hand, so I would go to the ground and I noticed him looking me in the eye. And he was looking at me with this very tired face, but very smiling face. And he would say, Omar, me tuarde. And this phrase never meant anything to me, except at that moment, it felt different. It empowered me, so I actually managed to carry him and much strongly run with him until somebody started knocking me from behind, saying, Omar, stop, stop. 
I can't stop. I would lose all energy I have. But I start to feel differently. Bashir was getting heavier, and he started falling from my arms, fell to the ground, and he was asleep. I would slap him on the face, Bashir. Bashir, wake up. I need your help to get you back to the room. Bashir, wake up. And he was so tired, he needed to sleep. Or more, he was so tired that he needed to die in my arms. And he did. I returned back to the room where I used to return back every day carrying someone in my arms. And the eyes, very proud of me, but that day, I was disappointed in myself. I wasn't disappointed in Bashir, in the world of failing me for years, me and my cousin. And I came back, could not look anyone in the eye because I can't. Because the eyes are questioning me, where is Bashir? I could not look them, so I would look at the walls. The very dark, hopeless walls that are colored with our blood from the daily torture we had. And that brought me nothing but depression and one memory. Bashir used to sit in that small square, seeing these blood-colored walls, seeing all this depression, all this pain in these rooms, and he would smile and say, me toward regardless of the reaction of the people. So I would sit there, Bashir's buddy is dead, but I can't live without him. He's the only thing I loved, the only thing I had left. So I would sit there crying, but would be at the same time trying to smile to the people all in the room. And nobody would smile back because it wasn't real. But I did it two days, three days, four days until somebody smiled back to me. And I remember that day I was crying and they smiled back to me and I could not wait to tell them that phrase, me toward. I could not wait to be Bashir. That was the most meaningful thing I ever done. So one person smiles and the other person smiles. And then we became 10, 20, 30. The entire room is smiling. We changed our mentality. The way we're thinking about our environment, people got some hope. Bashir, by doing the very small thing that he loved doing, very tiny, simple smile with a few words, he brought us so much hope and taught us, teaches you that to contribute, to help the people in the most need, you only need to do the things that you love doing. And these things could be very, very simple. Hope is great, but it is not enough. After sitting for hours, I was forced to stand, to exchange place with the person who was standing. There was now enough place. So every four hours, I will switch. In my four hours, I used to be standing, waiting to sit, because I'm in pain. But after learning from Bashir, I would stand in my square. Raising my arms, taking them down, forth and back down if I can, trying to exercise. Because I realized I can't be in prison just waiting to die. I have to try to survive. And if I die, let me die standing. Let me die trying to survive. And I wished other people would do it. And do it for one, two, three, four, five days, and nobody would react, people sitting, and nobody would exercise. But then that guy stood in the room and start doing exactly what I was doing. And that person became two, and the two became ten, and the ten became the entire room. Bashir brought us more than hope. He brought us a way to actually take actions, to learn from what we have been doing for so long time. I'm so close to death. They shot, shot, poof, and I died. I opened my eyes, I woke up, and there she is. 
in front of me after so many years was a tree. I haven't seen a tree in years. I would love to hug a tree after all these years. And I saw a bird flying again and a flower and grass and color. I haven't seen color in years. It all was a mock execution arranged to smuggle me out of prison. I was so close to death. And if that taught me one thing, it taught me that my life has a value, it has a purpose. And the purpose of my life today is being a voice for the voiceless. Being here telling the stories of the ones who can't tell their stories. Being exactly what Bashir would have loved me to be. A champion of change. So for you and for me and for Bashir, Meet Warde. <laughs>